In Austin, Texas, Chef Ramin Nunez is helping transform the city's culinary scene and picking up scores of prestigious awards along the way. His colorful and inventive recipes use flavors from Mexico to highlight food that is pure Texan. After starting his restaurant Suerte in 2018, Nunez has opened two other wildly successful establishments. He shows us how it all comes together beginning where else but the kitchen. We buy things, we chop them into little things, and we charge them more than what we paid for it. <laughs> Restaurant 101, you heard it here first. Fermin Nunez has the formula down pat at a celebrated premier restaurant, Suerte. We're gonna go 72, all this. Fresh local ingredients cooked using techniques from his childhood in northern Mexico. We're going to take this beautiful food to 2A, please. Every tortilla that you have at Suerte with your meal comes from the masa that was ground this morning, not refrigerated, cooked to order. Nunez calls this the backbone to Suerte. Masa, or dough made from dry corn, a team is dedicated to pressing up to 3,000 tortillas from it each day. A team with a fast, yet turns out, delicate approach. Gotta put some muscle to it. Okay. That might be, let's see how it oh, is. Oh no, did I do it too much? Yeah, I think that might be a little too much. Oh no! Oh no! I put too much muscle! We, we gotta get it like that. <laughs> they don't look anything alike. The chef takes pride in introducing diners to a different version of Mexican flavors. We have big eye tuna. And says the cuisine itself has often been overlooked. It's a beautiful thing about Mexican cooking that it's one of the few uh, cuisines that teaches you how to burn things on purpose. The most true in regards to Mexican cooking is that what is true is only what the last person told you. He tells us first about his dip of chilies, garlic and lentils, compacted into a paste and refried before adding olive oil and Oaxacan crema, a substantial substitute for a familiar favorite. When people visit Suerte, what do you want them to walk away with? I want them to have a different idea or perception of what Mexican food can be. When we opened, we didn't have guacamole. We never really had chips and salsa on the menu, right? And when people said, oh, I want to a Mexican restaurant, yeah. uh, without even looking at the menu, they'd be like, I'll have the chips and salsa. Yeah, yeah. And I've always had the mentality, if you're going to say no at a restaurant, you have to follow it by yes. That's hospitality to me. Also part of Nunez's hospitality, a brightly colored tostada, oak grilled sweet potatoes. You got to start with a tortilla. Mm -hmm. And a flavorful barbacoa of smoked goat with salsa cruda and roja. It is smoky. But few dishes have been with a 35 year old as long as this. Carnitas topped with mole negro, a complex and classic sauce slowly prepared over three days. Mexican food to me is all about sauce work mm -hmm. because we have this thing that is like so precious as chilies and burning tortillas, burning onions, and then stewing it and then adding chocolate in the last time. Like, you can't recreate that with French cooking at all, right? A mix Nunez has been working and reworking for close to a decade. Its deep flavors of nuttiness, heat, and sweetness dependent more on moods than measurements. It's one of those things that we have guidelines more than a recipe because it's like all about feel. Mm. I myself have taken mole off the menu because I was the one that was doing it. It was bitter, it was, it was, it was not balanced. It reflected your mood. It, it, yeah, it was very <laughs> unbalanced, just like I was. The restaurateur didn't always see food as an expression of himself. As a child, stability was his priority, as he spent his adolescence moving back and forth between Mexico and Texas. It wasn't until college that Nunez finally found his passion in the campus cafeteria. I was a sandwich artist. I worked the Mongolian Grill a little bit. <laughs> I also worked the pizza station. But it was being in that special part of the kitchen that is like the camaraderie that I felt with everybody. So, I love that, that you go to college and then the place that you feel the most excitement is in the, the dorm, dorm room cafeteria. cafeteria. And things like that were like giving me all those flags that college was not going to be for me. Yeah. After switching to culinary school, he began learning the ropes in San Antonio restaurants, but uncertainty loomed. Were there challenges in coming up through these kitchens with your immigration status? Yeah, that was one of the, the hardest things I went through. So I came here on a student visa mm -hmm. uh, and I overstayed my welcome. 
The challenge of going to Mexico and earning a living on a cook salary was really frightening for me. But it was something that I was also very ashamed of because I don't think people really understand of what you go through when you are undocumented, right? You don't have that fear of like driving to the grocery store and getting pulled over and then maybe, maybe you don't make it back home. As Nunez waited for legal residency, the kitchen became his refuge. The beautiful thing about working the grill station on a Friday night is that you can't think about your immigration status because the steak needs to be at the pass in six minutes. That's also has been my relationship with, with cooking. It's allowed me to manage my problems, but also like digest them. He stayed focused on that part, eventually working his way up through some of Austin's best kitchens before opening Suerte. And a year after being named Food and Wine's Best New Chef, Nunez officially became an American citizen in 2022. He followed up Suerte's success last fall by starting another restaurant, Este, focused on coastal Mexican cuisine. Yes. The corn is over there. It also houses a large garden for his restaurants his mother now volunteers in. You could say that for me, cooks the food, but you help grow it. That's right. That's <laughs> what I do. <laughs> so this is your crop right this here. This is my crop here. Yeah. Yes. Something Nunez made possible by sponsoring her residency, and they hope her soon-to-be citizenship. Look at that. Thank you. The smell. The smell it. Mm. That was the biggest thing that I wanted to be a citizen for, to extend that to my mother through residency, to like extend that to somebody you love so much is the best feeling ever. We don't have to worry about much now. At this point, every problem is fixable, you know? Yeah. Because we've gone through so much. Earlier this year, Nunez was named a semifinalist for a James Beard Award. And Este has been repeatedly hailed as one of the best new restaurants in not only Austin, but the country. When you think about that and you think about what you went through. Absolutely. I mean, if that's not the American dream, I don't know what it is, right? I think it's like sticking to what I believe in, what I love, and not representing my country that I love so much in, in, in a different country. Like, I love, I love that I get to do that every day. It was so wonderful getting to know Fermin and his family. By the way, suerte means luck in mm -hmm. Spanish, and it's fair to say that he has created so much of his own luck. Uh, the tortillas, excellent. You go to Austin, you eat tacos, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and you realize the secret is Homemade all tortillas. in the tor tortillas. Yeah. 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 Cheers to that. Cheers. What do we have here? Cheers we that. have uh, quite, quite a bit of alcohol. Quite a beverage. <laughs> a way to start your day. Nice There's pork. no doubt about but it. it has some this is my breakfast sure. smoothie. <laughs> I love it. It looks like you're sitting in the restaurant right now. Mm. You can't see behind you. Quite I, uh, in there. It looks I enjoy very, this. very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Bottoms up. The Dish is sponsored by Oceana Cruises. Your world, your way.